Magazine writer Michael Bihar traveled to Indonesia as a very unusual kind of tourist. He went on a trip designed to make first contact. That's a name for finding native tribes so remote they've never been in touch with the outside world. It's really a window into our own past, and there's something very sort of spiritual about it in a way. Michael Bihar also says that making first contact could be morally questionable. He spoke with Steve Inskeep. Some experts doubt that there still are uncontacted tribes. Others say if they do exist, they would be in remote spots like South America's Amazon Basin. Another possible location might be West Papua, a province of Indonesia. That's where Bihar traveled for Outside Magazine. He found an American who offers first contact tours. The American claimed he would try to find uncontacted tribes for about $8,000. That guide, Kelly Wolford, took Bihar and others into the jungle, but Bihar still is not entirely sure about the group of men they encountered. Probably within 30 seconds, they had completely surrounded us, you know, with eight guys, and they would sort of jump out from behind trees and pull their bows back and, and let them go without an arrow in it. Now, you didn't know that, so you would obviously flinch, but this is also something common among these tribes all over as they do an aggression where they release their bowstring with no arrow in it to show you, like, hey, we're in charge. And they eventually sort of came closer, closer in and sort of stood there. And in the end, you got a good look at some of these, these gentlemen. It was sort of strange. They sort of lined up almost military style. And this is, was a little odd. And we thought, hmm, this looks like they're sort of posing or something. We, we weren't sure. But they, uh, their dress was actually quite beautiful. They had um, on these giant wigs. They almost look like dreadlocks. And they're made of these feathers called cassowary feathers. And then they were wearing some beautiful sort of woven skirts that were made out of bright yellow grass. And they had armbands made out of the same sort of yellow grass. And they had sort of white makeup on, which was probably just some mud and, and mixed with ash. And they didn't really stick around long. We, we were maybe there for about a minute and a half. And then they started yelling, screaming, and ran off into the jungle. But I did notice before this happened in our little minute together, you could see them holding their bows and their hands were shaking, shaking quite violently. I mean, you know, and I translate that as really terror. You mentioned a couple of times that you had some doubts about what you saw. Right. If it was real, mm -hmm. was it right to go about it this way? If it was real, definitely I would say no. <laughs> and that is the main reason, this is something I learned a little bit, mainly after I came back and did some research and met with anthropologists, is that the single greatest danger to making first contact is disease. Kelly is concerned about that, and he talks about not wanting to spread disease to the tribe. But nevertheless, there was no protection taken as far as us or for them. You mentioned that you spoke to anthropologists afterward to find out about the right way to do this. You were also trying to find out if you could believe your eyes, if you really had made first contact with people who had never been contacted before. That's true. We The main thing we did is we took the video we shot and took it around. I mailed it to some, and I actually met in person with some people at the Smithsonian. And a lot of the people I spoke with felt that the men we saw probably were jungle dwellers, and they you know, had very little contact with the outside world. But something about the way they were reacting to us didn't seem right. Some of the things they point out are, are of a more scientific aspect. The biggest one, a lot of anthropologists said these guys had no skin diseases and these are like ringworm and, and, and things you get in the jungle. The men looked a little too healthy. The other suspicion that the anthropologists raised is the clothing they were wearing was very elaborate and ceremonial. And if you're out hunting pig or what, what we were told they were doing, you wouldn't wear this. It would, be, it would be like you wearing a tuxedo to go mountain climbing. It would be ridiculous. What happened when you took your suspicions back to your tour guide, Kelly Wolford? Well, he actually had some good responses to defend what we saw was real. For the ceremonial dress, you know, he said that these guys were probably out on some rite of passage. There was eight of them, but one of them was an older man who was probably a chief, and, and you know, it was sort of like the Boy Scout trip out in the woods. And the other thing he he did have sort of a good point is that he said the reason these guys didn't have skin diseases and, and didn't have protein deficiencies is that they've been living out there for thousands of years. And if they really were getting protein deficiency and skin disease all the time, evolution would have killed them off. Do you wish the story was true, that you had made first contact with somebody? Oh, certainly. I mean, I sort of admitted to myself in going that it didn't really seem like the right thing to do. You know, if I was invited by a real scientific team of anthropologists to go on something like this, I probably wouldn't have felt that way. But I sort of went into the trip thinking either this is very morally wrong or it's a fake. That's journalist Michael Bihar. His article, The Selling of the Last Savage, can be found in the current issue of Outside Magazine.